Many believe it doesn't matter what you mix creatine with, but research suggests otherwise. Among all supplements available, creatine is one of the few that is strongly supported by research for its benefits in weightlifting. Numerous studies have shown that it can slightly enhance your strength gains and long-term muscle growth while also improving anaerobic capacity and, of course, power output. So there's no doubt that creatine can be beneficial for those who respond to it. However, what's less commonly known is how to take it for maximum effectiveness and whether there are any potential side effects. In this video, we will cover exactly that. Before diving in, it's important to understand how creatine works. To put it simply, when we lift weights, our muscles rely on ATP as their primary energy source. Creatine helps regenerate ATP more quickly, allowing us to squeeze out an extra rep or two during workouts. While creatine is naturally found in the body and in various protein sources, supplementing with it can further increase muscle creatine levels. It's also worth noting that not everyone responds to creatine in the same way. Research suggests that those who respond well tend to have a high percentage of type 2 muscle fibers and a lower initial muscle creatine content, while non-responders typically have the opposite. Unfortunately, determining whether you are a responder outside of a clinical setting is difficult. However, if you are a responder, studies indicate that your weight should increase slightly after a month of supplementation due to water retention in the muscles. I recommend trying creatine for a few months and monitoring any changes in strength and weight to see if it works for you. Now that we understand how creatine works, let's go over how to maximize its effectiveness. Despite the marketing claims that different forms of creatine are superior, research has found that this isn't the case. A review article states that claims of other forms being more effective are currently unsubstantiated. One possible exception is polyethylene glycosylated creatine, which according to one study in the Journal of Strength and Conditioning, provided the same benefits as creatine monohydrate, but required a 75% lower dose, suggesting better absorption. However, further research is needed to confirm this. For now, I would recommend sticking with creatine monohydrate to save money. The only time you might consider a buffered or micronized form, such as creatine hydrochloride, is if it monohydrate upsets your stomach, as these alternatives may be easier to digest. Many believe it doesn't matter what you mix creatine with, but research suggests otherwise. As shown in a study by Kreider and colleagues, muscle creatine levels increased significantly more when creatine was taken with carbohydrates or a combination of carbohydrates and protein rather than alone. In fact, the study showed that combining creatine with carbs and protein nearly doubled absorption compared to taking it alone. Another study confirmed this, recommending around 47 grams of carbs and 50 grams of protein to enhance creatine retention. Ideally, you should take creatine with a meal or a shake containing enough carbs and protein for the best results. Similarly, while some say timing doesn't matter, research suggests there may be a slight advantage to taking creatine post-workout. Two recent studies comparing pre- and post-workout creatine intake found that post-workout consumption provided a slight but non significant benefit in terms of performance enhancement. Given that most people consume a meal or shake with sufficient carbs and protein after their workout, both of which improve creatine absorption, it makes sense to take it post-workout for any potential additional benefits. There are three main ways to take creatine. The first method is the loading protocol, where you take around 20 grams per day for five to seven days, and then switch to three to five grams daily to maintain elevated creatine levels. The second method is to take three to five grams daily from the start, which gradually increases muscle's creatine content over time. Studies show that both methods lead to the same results, but loading works faster, so the choice is yours. The third method is cycling creatine, where you take it for a period and then stop. But research indicates that this isn't necessary since long-term creatine use does not decrease natural creatine production. 
Since creatine became popular in the 19th, over a thousand studies have been conducted and none have found any serious side effects. The only consistently reported effect is weight gain due to water retention in the muscles. However, some individuals experience stomach cramping if they don't drink enough water or diarrhea if they take too much creatine at once. To avoid this, ensure you stay hydrated and space out your creatine intake, especially if following a loading phase. Now let's address the common concern about creatine causing hair loss. This idea stems from a single 2009 study in which male rugby players experienced an increase in DHT levels after taking creatine. Since DHT is linked to male pattern baldness, some speculate that creatine may accelerate hair loss in those genetically predisposed. However, this theory is based on just one study that has never been replicated, nor has it shown a direct link between creatine and hair loss. In my opinion, if you have no family history of baldness, there's no reason to worry. If you do, you may want to be cautious, but the current evidence remains inconclusive. To sum it all up, here are the key takeaways. One thing to remember is that, like all supplements, creatine is just a small piece of the puzzle. Your training, nutrition are far more important for achieving results, and supplements should only be considered after those foundations are in place. If you need help in structuring your training program, meal plan, and the supplementation regimen, head over to DM Fitness where I create a custom-tailored program so you can reach your fitness goals faster. The link is in the description. Thanks for watching, I hope you found this video helpful. Last time I covered the use of protein powder for best effectiveness and muscle growth. Make sure to check that video. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to my channel. I'd also appreciate if you followed me on Instagram where I post informative content more regularly. Thank you all for your support and I'll see you in the next video.